Hey, what's going on? My reefing fam, March here, Fragbox TV. We got in some really beautiful corals from Indonesia. So let me just walk through the tanks and kind of show you what came in because I know you guys like these videos and I enjoy making them. So let's get right to it. First off, some very beautiful torch coral, branching torch coral. I guess it's kind of redundant to say branching torch coral because as far as I know, they all come branching. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, in the, in the comments below, but these ones are really, really cool. Indonesia has some of the nicest torch corals um, that come out of the ocean. They're just, they're just fantastic. Some more over here. Torch corals, very, very popular in the hobby right now. They've always been popular, but recently, like, they've just become more popular. They're kind of like the hot, trendy coral, but and there's a lot of different names and types and yeah, people just seem to love them. They add lots of nice movement. Just keep in mind, very, very aggressive sting. So need lots of room from other corals. You can see we kind of group them together, torch on their own, and then surrounded by some other uh, euphilia, hammers, frog spawn. But generally speaking, give them some room. You don't want them touching any other corals. This is a pretty cool piece we got in. This is a Montipora encrusting variety. And the trade name is usually reverse sunset. So it's got green, with orange polyps, the sunset typically has a nice deep orange base with green polyps. This is most likely gonna get fragged up so that many hobbyists can enjoy it. And it's an easy to keep, uh, relatively fast growing species of encrusting Montipora. We got in some killer, killer, really nice open brain corals. This one's can't decide if he wants to be red or blue or teal. I guess he's both. Uh, some other nice ones over here. Open brain, open brain. This is not an open brain. This is a little rock that Tia actually grew out in her Evo, but it was taking over. So we decided to put it up for sale. So that's available too. This is some other nice open brain, easy coral to keep, throw it on the sand bed. And that's about it for open brain. You don't really, um, no special feeding, no special care requirements. Um, just a very basic, easy, beautiful to keep LPS coral. This is something we don't get in too often. Not the craziest coral, just unique and different and sort of rare for us um, in terms of species. This is called a Hydnophora, and we just don't see them too often, um, at least in our store. I don't know, maybe where, where you're watching, they're a little more common, but for us, they're, they're sort of rare. Kind of like this piece over here, which is a type of, I think it's a type of frog spawn, but the, the real name is Yeye Menensis, and it's kind of like a super fat, frog spawn. That's the way I sort of think about it. Instead of um, your typical frog spawn that branches off into smaller golf ball size heads, these things branch off into like the size of apples. So, and it's uh, a little bit more bubbly in appearance. It's a pretty cool piece and that's a uh, mouthful to pronounce. It's called Ye Ye Manensis. It's up on our site right now, actually, if you're interested in this one. These are really cool. So one of the highlights of this order, I would say for sure is the plate corals. Just really cool colors, patterns, healthy orange with red mouth, orange and green. This one is kind of a little wonky shape, but really, really neat color. And this one over here, I might just keep for myself because it's fantastic. But this is the real star of the show. This is like a red, purpley, pink, kind of hard to describe the color. You know, I'm always complaining how it's hard to capture the color with the camera, but this is a very, uh, quite rare color to see. Like a red color on a plate coral is quite unusual. We don't see them like that too often. And if you have a larger aquarium, this thing is just, wow. Massive wall hammer with gold and purple hues. Really, really cool piece. Super healthy, though the shipment overall came really healthy. One of my personal favorite corals, flower pot or the Ganipora. Nice red variety. A Canthophilia, can't go wrong with these. And I think I mentioned in a previous video, these might be quite rare pretty soon as some of the laws and regulations regarding coral exports are set to change, or I think they may have already changed um, for wild uh, harvesting of corals. This is a nice one too, over here. Good job, Bonnie. Shout out to Bonnie. She grabbed this like uh, almost instantaneously, went up on the site and I hit refresh and she checked out within her in her cart, but that's a really, really cool piece. And this is just, this is wow, Blastomusa. This is the Welsi variety. So like much larger, fatter heads than your typical blasto, or no, bigger than the merletti, sorry. That's like, I guess, sort of standard, but really cool color, deep reds, some yellows and greens around the skirt. That's a really fantastic piece that the camera's not doing justice at all. Some cool clove polyps and some very nice 
pallies or zoas or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to call them pallies. They're on the fatter side, palithoa. But cool patterns, colors, all look good. And I think I'm going to keep one of each variety here to add to our farm to grow them out. This one's just fantastic. Really cool colors. It's got like three or four going on in there. Bam! Elegance corals. Those look pretty cool. And if you saw in the video, some of them, uh, the unboxing video, they didn't look, you know, the greatest when they came out of the bag. And you can see this is only two days later. They've, they're open and happy like nothing's happened. They're just, just happy to be here. I use the word happy a lot to describe corals. I'm pretty sure they don't have any emotions, but they make me happy. So I'm going to call them happy. This guy's looking happy. Mr. Happy Christmas Favia. Some other sort of Favia over here. And some cool Echnophora or Chalice. More plate corals, plate, plate, plate. These ones are kind of unique. They got this bluish black kind of contrast going on. It's a little bit different than your sort of standard, this would be like a standard green plate coral, but these ones are, these are different. They're kind of stripey in some way. This is nice too. Rhodactis. So these are what they call bullseye, or sometimes they'll call them Tonga mushrooms in the trade, but these aren't from Tonga. They're from Indonesia, but really, really cool rock just completely covered if you want to see this is how they come um, from our suppliers and we usually frag them down into smaller more user-friendly pieces like single heads so that's typically what hobbyists at least up here in Canada are looking for kind of smaller pieces the branching hammer came really nice and I messed up because I started fragging them and then I remembered I should I should do a video but these are really cool and we got some nice gold varieties as well somewhere let me see if I can find one sorry for the camera work over here those are going to be up on the site shortly. I just fragged some of them and they're looking pretty good. Really, really easy to frag the branching ones. Some Cyanarina, but I was calling me Cyanaria for the last 15 years. Thank you to someone. I can't remember who you are who corrected me, but really, really unique coral. Green star polyp, great for beginners. If you're looking for your first coral or something that's just like completely immortal, bulletproof, cannot be killed, this is it right here. Green star polyps. Um, it's, it's impossible to kill it. If this thing doesn't survive in your tank, it, something's got to be so terribly wrong. It's, it's just not possible. It's, it's like, uh, it's like a zombie. It, it'll grow from one little, almost nothing speck, um, into a piece like this in no time. Quite, quite a fast growing coral. If I can carefully hover over these, I know I showed you them in the last video, but the Christmas tree worm rocks are really cool. These ones have more blue than other colors. Sometimes we'll see orange or green. And it's like a actual worm that lives within a parietes coral. And I'm going to stick my finger in just to show you how cool it is when they go in. Bloop. Uh, that's too much fun. I could do that all day. And then they'll come back out. Uh, quite rare. We don't get these often. And um, they have lots of worms in them, but more blue than I'm used to. Lots and lots of blue on them, but they're really cool. And they are quite, quite rare. These are those um, hammers I was just talking about. So these got fragged like... I want to say half an hour ago and they look great they open up right away very very easy to frag i can show you if you want to see a video on how to frag hammer corals branching ones um, if you have the right tools super easy i know a lot of people do it with a dremel with great success great success yeah they're looking good very happy with these hammers that's about it the shipment was a little bit on the smaller side tank was looking empty brought some stuff in uh next video maybe i'm going to talk to you about some cyano issues actually that i'm dealing with in this system which is our display tank, not actually in here, but in the sump. So the basement of this tank, as you can see, there's no sump. There's just a bunch of storage underneath right now, but this runs into a much, much larger frag system where I'm dealing with some crazy cyano issues and up here, it looks great. So I think it's related to flow, probably needs more flow down in the frag tank, but it's getting quite bad to the point where today I came in and three or four of these um, poor chromis actually, where are the chromis, blue chromis perished. I think it's related to the to the red slime issue I have going on in there. But that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this episode of Fragbox TV. And make sure to subscribe and like it if you guys like the content. Uh, happy reefing. Have a good day.